This presentation is about Link, and Link is a library that is very powerful and is used for creating Windows applications. Link stands for Language Integrated Query. Right now this is intended for COP4020 at University of Central Florida, and as I speak it is the spring semester of 2020. So here's what we're going to try to cover. Uh, getting started with Link, um, so we're going to do some, some Hello Worlds with Link, uh, common Link operations, and uh, this is actually what you're going to be tested on at the end of this semester on the C-sharp part. We're probably not going to get much chance to do link, linked entities, linked XML, and things like that, or even parallel link. So really my only objective is to cover the, the link basics. So if you'd like, you can download a tool called LinkPad. And LinkPad is just a, a really small program that lets you experiment with Link without having to um, run Visual Studio. And I used to use this for creating the examples um, in this class, but now I just go ahead and use Visual Studio. Um, there is a download link here, uh, linkpad.net uh, slash download.aspx, if you want to take a look at it. So we're going to talk about how Link works. There's a very important interface named iEnumerable that all of the Link objects implement. I'm, I'm going to skip the Link pad part, and then we'll just talk about general operations. As I said before, Link stands for Language Integrated Query. So what is it? It's a technology for searching and filtering data sets. Now let's go back to your Haskell instruction. This is actually what C Sharp has added that is very much functional. Remember we talked about how a lot of the functional programming has migrated or, or moved over to, to the regular imperative languages. Well C Sharp has adopted a lot of these uh, functional ideas and Link is a very strong component of that. So what we're going to be talking about is link uh, to objects for working with arrays, lists. Um, we're not going to get the chance to go to link to entities or link to XML. Um, but the thing is, with a single line, you can replace an entire for loop. Imagine back to Haskell using map and filter and, and so forth. It's kind of the same way. It's, it's kind of the same thing uh, in Java and C even in C-sharp, which hopefully you have a, a, a taste for by now, you know, to do a lot of these things, you have to use for loops. But in link, just a single line, and you can do all of these operations, just like you did in Haskell. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a side-by-side -side comparison of some regular imperative code on the left and some link code on the right. So we're going to have a for loop. And notice our results is up here. That's where we're going to put the results from our uh, calculations. And we're going to run through. We have some sort of an input, um, some sort of an input list or array. And we, we roll through it. We get each value from the input array. And we square it. It's into a local variable called y. And if y is greater than 10, we add it to the results list. So this is probably part of a function. And then we return the results. So that's, that's pretty much what you've been doing for a long time now. Um, that's nothing new. But if we use link to do this, um, now, notice I have these on three different lines because it's just a continuation. You could have this on a single line if, if you had the room uh, to the right. But with a single line, you can replace that entire for loop. Okay. Notice that this is, this, notice that this looks very similar to those lambdas that we've been using all along and where if you know anything about uh, SQL it's a qualifier so uh, y greater than 10 and then we add it to the list so that's essentially the side-by-side -side comparison of a of an imperative for loop and a link equivalent there are actually two ways to implement link uh, the first way is with a, a number of extension methods this is actually what I normally prefer um, they're called operators. Uh, the second way is with query express and syntax 
And this is also okay if you prefer it. Just depends on uh, what your preferences are. It's a lot like the the SQL that you use for databases, um, but it's directly embedded into C sharp. So now going back to something we talked about in Haskell, link operators are higher order functions. Um, you can give them functions. It's like functions taking functions. Okay, it's the same as as those filter and map things that we used in Haskell. So link operators present a fluent interface. So back to this idea of the I enumerable interface. So I enumerable is an interface that that all link objects must implement. And the the uh, less than t greater than. You probably learned this when you took Java class or OOP class. Um, it's like a generic. So it's a strongly typed interface because you, you tell it what type you're, you're operating on. There is a weakly typed I enumerable counterpart, and we're not going to cover that. I just want to let you know that, that there is such a thing. But I enumerable is implemented by all .NET collection types, and that's arrays. Anytime you declare something such as, say, an integer array, you'll automatically get the functionality from I enumerable. So we're going to go ahead and break from the slides for just a minute and go to our friend Visual Studio. And I'm going to create a new project. And for this part, for this link week, almost everything's going to be a console application. So I'm going to say link one, probably just go through a series of these link numbers. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you what this project looks like from File Explorer. So here we got File Explorer. And here's my project directory. Notice I have a bin folder with debug. OBJ. And what's interesting is I didn't really do anything to create those. But if I go ahead and compile this, Say it's compiled, and I go back here. Um, the bin now still has debug with with all this code, compiled code. So, so actually, when you turn your projects in, what I'm going to ask you to do is get rid of bin and obj, delete those. Use right now. Close Visual Studio. Try again. So I'm going to delete those, and and then you can go ahead and. Uh, zip up this entire project to say send to here and the thing is when I open that back up it will compile with, without any problem even though it doesn't even though you've deleted those um, folders and the reason you want to do that is to make your upload your your upload file a lot smaller Link. It's going to run this. Of course, I've got two two monitors, so sometimes I have to drag stuff over. Okay, so that's just so just to let you know to turn in your projects for homework and or tests. Delete the bin and obj folders, then zip the entire project. And let me just go back again and, and show you that. Here I've got my, my link one folder. And there actually there's a link one folder embedded with a link one folder. That's because there's this idea of solutions and projects. So if you delete these two folders, it's okay because um, it will get rid of a lot of the, the, the size of the, of the zip you're going to send me, and it'll still compile just fine. So let me go ahead and create a, a simple um, integer um, data array. Okay. And by the way, um, 
data in C sharp always defaults to zero. So all of these are going to be zero. What I'm going to do is go ahead and seed it. Actually, I shouldn't do 10. I should say data length. That's always that's actually the best uh, programming pattern in C sharp. Uh, try, try not to hard code anything. Data dot i equals r and d dot next. Okay, so that's nothing new. I, I did I did not teach you anything new just now. What I'd like to go go through since we've in the slides we've talked about i enumerable. If you do for each int i crap <laughs> int let's see i and data con console right line i so this is what i enumerable gives us okay here to, to populate it we had to use this, the, the the normal uh, for loop but i enumerable gives us this for each so let me go ahead and run that real quick and obviously i've got to drag that over since i've got the second monitor here um, so anyway, that's just a really simple example. So as I said, I enumerable is used by 4H. That's how 4H is able to um, go through the entire array or list or whatever the, the enumerable object is. So methods that return I enumerable or I enumerator are considered iterator methods. So at this point, I'm just going to throw this out. Um, we use this yield statement and that returns the next uh, single iterated value. But uh, it's a little hard to understand until I, I, and shortly I will do an example. So what is enumerable? So enumerable is a concrete class, not an interface. And we're going to be using this. Um, it actually has a lot of static methods. So it has static generator methods for making sequences. Um, we're going to use the dot range method quite a bit. So, so just just let you know, it's it's not really related to I enumerable. Um, it's just a, a bunch of static. It's just a collection of static methods for for helping us out here. Okay, so let's go to a really simple demo where we implement I enumerable for a special class. Um, and in this case, we're not actually going to implement it for a class. We're going to implement it for uh, a single method. Okay, so we have this class called person. And let's go ahead and actually, private is implicit. I, I almost never uh, decorate it with private. Okay, now let's create a constructor that sets all this up. Okay, so here we're going to set first name, la middle name, last name. Okay. And here's where the magic actually comes in. We're going to create a, a names method that does implement I enumerable. Okay, so here we go, I enumerable. Now what we're going to do, we have this get. Um, that's basically, if you remember from last week, that is a getter for a property. And each one of these, see we're using the yield keyword. The first one is going to yield first name. The next one is going to yield middle name. And the next one is going to yield last name. And see, the class is able to keep track of what it's trying to do. It will, it will remember uh, which one is next. So we've got this class. Now let's go up here. Here we create a class, Sam Edward Hill. And we're going to use our for each friend. So it should go through and it should print out Sam, then Edward, then Hill. By the way, this could actually be simplified to just NM here if you wanted to. But I'm going to leave it the way I have it now. Okay, so let's run this and drag my console over there. And it 
it iterated through Sam Edward Hill. So the idea with I enumerable, it's going to give you, um, it's going to go through whatever data the class happens to own, whether it's a list or an array or whatever. Here it's just these three values, but it's able to, to iterate through them because it knows which is next, first, middle, last. Okay, and so that's the very most simple demo I can give you on how to create a class, your own class and your own method that implements iEnumerable. So as we've already talked about, enumerable is something that we use a lot for this section. It's not an interface. Normally, uh, an interface would have an I in front of it. Uh, enumerable is just a static collection of extension methods. They're really kind of helper functions um, that we're going to use a lot for convenience. So enumerable.empty enumerable gives you some sort of an empty object. Uh, Enumerable.repeat, it takes some sort of object and, and repeats it a number of times. What we're going to end up using mostly is this enumerable.range, and it's got a start and an account. And we use that to just give ourselves some, some data that we can work with. You can also do it with letters. Just It's just like uh, Haskell, Haskell list where you can do numeric, where you can do uh, characters or whatever you want to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and use enumerable. Notice here, I've created an enumerable range starting at 1, going uh, up to 10. And here I'm using uh, I enumerable to go ahead and uh, go through that list and print everything out. Run it. Move that over here and you see the results. So that's, that's like the very most simple thing we can possibly do. Okay, so now let's go ahead and use that and do something a little more complex. So we're going to say var squares equals, and here we're going to use select. Okay, select, if you've ever done any kind of database work or SQL work, it's, it's the same as the select statement. Now this is going to look an awful lot like uh, your Lambda expressions that we've been using. So pretty much what that's going to do is going to square everything that it gets. X is the incoming argument. X times X is, is what goes out. So then we do a for each. And I in the squares. Um, console.write line. I. So what we're going to do now is get, get a bunch of squares. Okay. So just remember select is a lot like the lambda expressions that we've been using up to this point. By the way, you might notice that this won't work. We're going to get a we're going to get a that will throw an exception. Actually, it doesn't throw an exception, but it it, it basically just tells you what the type is. So that actually doesn't work. What you can do though is do a string.join like that and that actually should should work to create a, a single string out of those um, like that. So once again without the I enumerable this, this would not work. So just like you'd expect, there are lots of functions we can perform on these objects uh, as a result of um, them implementing I enumerable. One is going to be sum, we're going to say squares, dot sum, and we're going to say console, dot right line, sum, run that guy, and here we go. So uh, normally, see that Normally, this would have to be done in some sort of a loop where you went ahead, you went through a list, and you summed everything up. And as we talked about early in the slides, we can actually go ahead and chain these things. Console, write line, and here we're going to say list dot select x sum. 
So there, it really does simplify from, even though I'm using link here, it simplifies all of it to that point. If I run that, we get the same thing. So as you can see, this looks a lot like the functional stuff we had done in Haskell earlier on. So let's talk about strings, which also implement ienumerable. Okay, let's start with this. Okay, so there we have string. So we should actually be able to um, iterate through this too for each. C in sentence console right line C bring that over there. Okay. We could just say console dot write. I think we'll all run together. Okay. Depends on what you really what you want to do. Um, so, a string is is a is a type of a, a list or an array, and it also implements i enumerable. So let's do some more interesting things with this. Do that, and let's go ahead and figure out what the word lengths of this are. Okay. So, word lengths. So we're going to split. So split is actually a string. Uh, method method on the string class, but we're going to split it. So for each of these, oh, we're going to get the length. Now, please note the string will take either that, or take that, or take that, or whatever. But it defaults to a blank space. So that's how that works. So what's going to happen is, when we're done, this will give us all of the word lengths in the sentence. It goes four and two. And one and four and eight. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll do that same trick to console.write line. We'll do a string.join. Word lengths. Okay. All right, so this should should do that. Now Notice how little code I have to go through this entire sentence, split it into words, and then get the um, length of each word. That's that's all it took. This this doesn't count because that's just display. But this little thing, it's 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 just like it's almost as if C sharp in this instance is a functional language. Okay, so let me tighten this up just a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to enhance this. And we're, we're going to get the words and the lengths all in one um, data object. So this expression that I'm going to paste in here, this is the same, right? And essentially what it's doing inside of the Lambda is creating a new object with word, W, and the size. So that gives us really a, a data structure. It's not really a technical data structure, but it gives us something like a data structure. And then we can go ahead and, and iterate through this and get a little more information. Um, by the way, this is that, that string format that I explained last week. So if we run this, it's actually quite a bit more information. It's telling us the word, what it is, and then the length, how long it is. So you can see how little code, this is display, right? But this is the actual code that, that, that did the separation and, and got the lengths. Okay, now we'll get even fancier. So what I have is I have a list of, of actual strings. This string actually has three words in it. This string has two words in it. Excuse me, one word. And this, this string has two words. What we're going to do is we're going to we're going to go ahead and process that in, in a way that, that that is really easy. We're going to split it and go ahead and, and and then we're going to have a list of words, all words, sequences. Now 
I know we've been using select, but this is select many. And what that's doing is it's splitting these strings based on based on that comma. Oops. Now if we just slap this in here and, and take a look at what happens and run this guy. What it did was it took everything here and it split red, green, blue, orange, white, pink. So notice that if you were using a for loop, this would have taken actually quite a bit of code uh, to do that same thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and act on two, two string lists. We paste them in here. Got a couple prepared already. And so we can go ahead and act on these at the same time with link. Okay, so as you can see, we're taking the colors list and we're selecting many. Okay, so Z is going to be, you know, red, green, and blue. Excuse me, red, green, and gray. But then it's also taking a look at the objects and it's giving us this pair. Okay, and then it's going to output them just like that. So let's go ahead and do our console.write line, that trick we've been using this whole time. Run it. And now you can see red house, red car, red bicycle, so forth. That's exactly uh, what we did. Remember when we had the list comprehensions from Haskell when we had two uh, data sources? It's the exact same thing. Okay, so let's uh, summarize what we've talked about so far. Link is a set of functions, and I've been showing you these operator functions so far. That's like the, the select, select many, sum, and so forth. There actually have, there actually is um, another syntax implementation that for the moment I'm not planning to cover. I may, if we have time. Then we have this enumerable static class that is really easy, has a bunch of helper functions that um, are useful for us. There are also different varieties of link that we're not uh, going to be able to cover, linked to objects, linked to entities, linked to XML. And if you've taken a look at the link pad that you've already downloaded, you might notice that um, it's, it's pretty good and pretty, pretty useful. So there are quite a few link operator categories, and they include projection, filtering, which by now should be very familiar to you, uh, sorting, which also is, is pretty, pretty straightforward, um, set operations, quantifier operations, grouping, element ops, converting types, concatenation, and aggregation. And we should be able to get through all of those in this section. So a couple of notes here. Some operators are immediate. Remember from Haskell we talked about how some things are immediate and some are lazy. Uh, well the same thing happens in link. Um, so some are immediate, they, they iterate the entire collection as soon as they're invoked. Um, that's things such as count, to array, and you don't have any choice, they really have to go through the whole list. So iterating a collection uh, more than once is a bad idea. Um, some operators, as in Haskell, are deferred. So calculations will only happen when you iterate the collection. Uh, deferred operations can be streaming, non-streaming. So just, just uh, remember that. Okay, so this exercise we're going to do represents the kind of questions or problems I will give you on your test. Um, so we're going to implement a function called myFilter that does the following. It takes a sequence of numbers, and you can see in this code um, there's, there's an input, which is some sort of list or enumerable innumerable of, of integers. So it takes a sequence of integers, removes all odd integers, leaving only even ones, squares each one of those integers, and removes any resulting integer that is greater than 50. So we're going to do all that. Um, and by the way, this, this um, framework um, with a class and then the static um, I enumerable is going to be what I'm going to prefer over the course of your exercises. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and get started by pasting in the boilerplate. And this is the static method we're going to go ahead and, and use. So in main, the reason this is underlined is because nothing's being returned. So we'll, we'll take care of that shortly. Okay, so we're going to say var my list equals range. Oops, sorry about that. Enumerable dot range, and let's give it a let's go to 250. Actually, that's going to give us a really long list. I was going to make it 50. Okay, so then we're going to call bar results equals my exercise dot my filter results. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, my list. Okay, so that's how we're going to call it. And then what we're going to do is um, console.writeline string.join. Results. Oh, got it. <laughs> okay, so that's main. Now, how are we going to pull this off here in my filter? Okay, so let's go ahead and um, declare an I enumerable int, and that'll be our return. And just so. We'll stop complaining and say, or then return that. Probably will complain that it's uh, um, unassigned local variable, but we'll, we'll take care of that right now. Okay, so we're going to use link to do this. Um, and let, let me just kind of review what we're doing. We're taking a sequence of integers, removing all odd, odd integers, leaving only even ones. Then we're going to square each one of them. And then we're going to remove any resulting integer that's greater than 50. Okay, so let's take this in stages. So rat equals input. The input comes from up here. And we're going to use the where clause because the where is how we're going to be doing our filtering. So input x, you can name that whatever you want. Um, x mod 2 equals 0, and that's the filtering that we're going to be doing. So let's kind of run that and just make sure we've got what we want. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that's step number one. So now we've got to square everything. So we'll say select. This is a trick that we showed you uh, just a couple of minutes ago. X can run this now, make sure that all those numbers are squared. Yep, they sure are. Okay. And the third part of this is that we only want numbers that are larger than 50. So here again, we're going to use a WHERE clause. Okay. We got to run this real quick. And that actually only gives us numbers that are greater than 50. So, um, just to let you know, this is the kind of exercise or the kind of problem that I will give you on your, your test. Okay, so the next exercise we're going to do, we're going to implement a function called merge that takes two number sequences and returns a sequence of all elements that are not present in both collections. So sequence one is one, two, three, four, five. Sequence two is one, three, five, seven, nine. So the return value is going to be everything that's um, not present in both collections. OK, so here I have two um, arrays of numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to build this merge. Actually, the first, we're really not going to I'm going to do this twice. Once is really a, 
an intersect and the other is merged. So what we're going to do is we're going to say ret equals um, input one dot intersect input two. I mean, and I know this says merge is weird, and this says intersect. So uh, all right, oops, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so we're going to do this twice. So let's go ahead and here var results equals x equals exercise dot merge input one input two and now let's do our console dot right line join excuse me string dot join results okay let's go ahead and run this I wonder what's complaining about here oops sorry about that All right, let's go ahead and run this now and it gives us the intersection of those those two sets and if we just go ahead and change this to merge and let's see, to do a merge, we're just going to use the union method here. And go ahead and run this. And we'll get different results from the last one. We're going to get a merge of all the elements of both um, arrays. OK, so the next exercise, uh, we're going to write a function that, given a sequence of numbers, finds the first contiguous subsequence of positive numbers and tells you how many numbers that subsequence contains. Um, example, if we input negative 3, negative 1, 371, negative 37, it should find a 371 because it's the first contiguous subsequence of positive numbers. And then it will output 3 because that is the um, length of that element, or that's the length of that list. Okay, let's go on to solve this problem. The first thing is I have this uh, method length of positive, and then I have this data set there. So what I'm supposed to be doing, this is what, what the intention is. Length equals exercise dot length input console, right line. All right, so that's the, that's the easy part. Now we have to figure out up here how to implement this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we have to skip these. So we're going to say ret equals input dot skip while x x is less than zero. Okay. And what that's gonna do the skip while skip while x is less than zero. And remember that this is exactly like um, Python and R and Haskell. And one little thing I forgot to do was I forgot to change this to an integer um, return type, which means that this is not going to be happy. So we're going to say count. So that should be okay there. So now we have these out of the way. The next thing we need to do is grab these and stop when we get there at the negative 3. So now we're going to say dot take while x x greater than or equal to 0. 
So this is going to be get everything as once we've get gotten rid of these negatives, then we're going to continue to go until we get positives when we hit a negative we'll stop. Okay. So let's go run this, see what happens. And we're going to move this over here. I get an answer of three, which is correct. Okay, so here's the last exercise we're going to do uh, for this lecture. So what we're going to do is create, um, calculate the value of an nth degree polynomial. Okay, the function is called poly, and the arguments are x is going to be the value of x for the polynomial, and i enumerable. We have some sort of an integer list that has the polynomial coefficients. And here's our example that we're going to go ahead and solve. But we're going to input the value of 2 for the um, value of x and a list of 3, 4, 5 for the coefficients. And the output should be 25, which would be 3 times 2 squared, 4 times 2, plus 5. Okay, so here we are with our poly function. That's going to be the value of x. And this is going to be the list of coefficients right here. Okay, so the first thing we want is our seed, and that's going to be um, the power. It'll be x to the 0, then it'll be x to the 1, then it'll be x to the 2. Um, but in order to do that, we're going to have to reverse the coefficients. So the first thing we need to do is say coefficients.reverse. Okay, so that's, that's, by the way, we're going to go say var su and that'll be what we return. Okay. Now we're going to use a really interesting function called aggregate. And aggregate is going to um, it's it's a little bit like like some of the stuff we did in Haskell it's going to go through the list and, and continually um, create um, an accumulated value. So we'll say dot aggregate. And now we want the seed, and the seed is going to be, like I said, x to the 0, x to the 1. And we're going we're to be using a pair, as we did in an exercise before. Okay, so that's what's coming in. So we're going to say P plus Q times math.pow. And math.pow is just uh, something to a certain power x, comma C plus plus. And what that's going to do is, oops, misspelled integer. So what that's going to do is it's going to take and add the accumulator P to Q to, it's going to add the accumulator to the uh, value raised to the power. I forgot my equal sign here. So now let's go ahead down here and we're going to say bar result equals um, exercise dot poly we'll say 2 is what we have fed it so let's declare this integer list um, list equals oops new int and let's put it in here I need to, there we go. Okay. Let's go to console on right line. Result. Now let's go ahead and run this. So we get and we get 25. And that's exactly what we're looking for. 
Now for completeness, I'm going to give you some examples of other things that we can do with link. These are full exercises. So I'm going to be using this class person. I've just got a name and an age form for him or her. And so that's a simple class we're going to go ahead and use. Now in main, let me go ahead and just uh, declare a list of these guys. Okay. So that just gives us something to work with. So pretty easy. We can use a for each and um, display every, everything in the list. Um, that's pretty easy. You'd expect that. It's nothing new, really. But now the one thing I'm going to add to this is the twist that we can actually do an order. We can use the order by clause. This is exactly like we do in SQL. SQL has an order by clause. And we, now we can just order it by age. And then it orders by age. We can actually go ahead and order it by age descending with an extra qualifier and by descending. Okay. Okay, so let me go ahead now and take that and group the group them by name. So now we have this object by name. It's um, the people grouped by name. And we can actually go through this now. Go through each, each data structure. We can write down the key. And then we can, we can show the actual values. So this is another way you can use this. So here, notice that we've, we've grouped by name and we have this duplicate name Adam. There's just one Boris, there's one Claire, there's one Jack. So it's a really interesting way that if you have like categories of some sort that you can group by category and have a, have a category title above it. And we could do the same thing for um, ages. We could group by age. So if there are any duplicate ages, so now we group by ages here. And we're going to roll through the ages, and for each age group, we can say how old the people are. So there are some duplicate age groups. See, Adam and Claire are the same age. Adam and Jack are the same age. Okay, now a couple of real simple examples. I've got these two strings, hello and help. And if we want to be distinct about it, there's a keyword in SQL called distinct. And what we'll do here is we'll just join word one and we'll only see the distinct letters. So it'll filter out all those extra O's and, and, and one of the L's. We can also intersect, which I already did for one of those exercises before. So we have an intersection of both So here's the first one is the um, the distinct, and the second one is the uh, intersection. And I believe I've already covered union. Let's go ahead and do a really simple example using union. We just do a union of all of them. Let's see, I believe I have a typo. There we go. Okay, so there's the union. Third line is the union. Okay, so let's talk about quantifier operations. So let's start with getting rid of this stuff. We'll work on this uh, arrays, this numbers array. Let me go ahead and bring an example over that I've created. So 
it's going to break that so it's a little more convenient to read. Okay, so this first one, um, all numbers, all positive numbers, we're going to list. We're going to use numbers.all. Okay, then we're going to say all the odd numbers. Um, so then our lambda is going to have this qualifier. Okay, so this is pretty easy. So those are qualifiers, and we use that dot all method. So let's go ahead and add one more expression to this. So any number less than two, or a qualifier. So it lets us know if we have any number less than two. Um, we have dot contains, which is really uh, useful. And I should point out that contains is, is not a lambda. I mean, it just does, does, it just takes an argument instead of a lambda. So it's got one that's um, contains five. We can do a count. Here again, all this is from SQL. So we can count, count the number um, of odd elements. simple and the last thing of these examples I'm going to show you is going to be uh, partitioning so let's go ahead and we have a new list of numbers to use here okay. um, and here we're going to go ahead and I know we've already done this in this lecture we've used uh, skip so we're going to skip two of the numbers and take the next six. And we can do a numbers.first, so console, oops, console.writeline, numbers.first. You can do it like that. Um, or you can also put a lambda in, inside of first. You can do now there might not actually be a first so you can actually use an alternative to this first or default that's sort of a safeguard um, and you do need a lambda for that okay. um, and then there's a, a dot last function that if you want to, if it's appropriate. So those are some of the uh, miscellaneous things you might end up using in Link. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize what we've uh, learned in this lecture. So there's an idea of projection, which we, we talked about in an earlier slide, and that includes uh, some of the functions such as select and select many, which we, we, we saw a number of examples that use this idea of filtering, we use the where method. Um, there's an al also another method called of type that filters data uh, by whatever the type of the collection is. Okay, we did some sorting with order by and then by. Um, we did uh, operations on algebraic sets. We did distinct, uh, intersect, union, except. I don't think we did an except example, but it's it's pretty simple. Uh, we did a bunch of quantifier operations with any, all, contains, count. Uh, we, did, we did some grouping with group by. Uh, we looked at element operations such as first and last and single. Uh, we did some partitioning with skip and take, skip while, take while. Uh, and the aggregation is, is very much like fold, where there is a fold, um, but it what it does is it takes a lambda and, and applies it to each pair uh, in, in turn. And we didn't look at concatenation, but it's pretty easy to concatenate two sets. Uh, sequences, a uh, take. Anyway, that's it for, for this lesson. And hopefully uh, it's pretty easy for you and you'll be able to do your homework this weekend.
without too much difficulty.